All right. Um, so, welcome in, guys. Welcome in. Uh, let me ask y'all this to start off the day. I want to see, what did you guys do this weekend? Tell me something other than slept or your work. Something you've done, you accomplished something, hopefully. What did you do? What did you do? Clean. What did you clean, you're asking? Again? Jeez. They just have you on a uh, retainer, I guess. They just keep, keep you going. All right, let's see what else. Watch the dog. I did that yesterday. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Wrestling in church. Okay, I dig that. Nice. Nice. Uh, you had your cousins over for dinner. Nice. What did you guys eat, Tyler? Pizza. What's your favorite type of pizza? Okay, all right. I'll keep it easy. Diddly squat. You didn't do anything. Played no video games, nothing. Wow, okay. All right, hung out with a girlfriend. Nice. What's his name? <laughs> How was that? You guys have a good time? Homework's all weekend long? Jeez. Actual classes. Really? Okay, all right. I'll see. Psychology, what else? Is your psychology your college class? Wow, that's pretty tough. Um, all right, Saturday you clean, Sunday you hung out with my girl Ashley. Nice, cool. What did you guys do? Oh, nice. Awesome. That's sick. All right, let's see. Hung out with friends. I dig that. Nice. What did you guys do? Hung out with a friend. Baby Seth hung out with a friend. <laughs> okay, all right. Friend of a friend or a friend that seems to be a boy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so I was uh, I went to the Harry Potter exhibit yesterday. Super cool. The one in Atlanta. They had like all these. I should I should pull up a photo. I'll pull up a photo. But it was super cool. Any like big Harry Potter people here? Yeah, kind of no. It's no one that's ever hated. What's that? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was super cool. Um, let me see. Let me ask you this. I was uh, I was also sick like all Saturday long. I had a, a sinus infection. I don't know what it was. It was crazy. So I just didn't do anything Saturday, quite literally nothing, other than grade. I think I graded y'all stuff on Saturday, and that's it. Um, so let me ask y'all this. Uh, can you remember a time where you were the, you were the most sick ever? Oh, tell me what happened. Tell me, tell me what you were sick with. Maybe if you don't remember your most sick moment, then um, I don't know. Tell me about, surely you've had a most sick moment, I would say. Or you can tell me the last time if you had COVID or if you've ever had COVID. I didn't have COVID, thankfully. So this isn't, but this is like a curse. It's not bad. The H is, uh, is, is, is getting there. But everything else looks good. Although I say that, I don't remember how to do the H. I forget. I don't remember. COVID because you kept passing out. Dang. Have you had it more than once? Okay, that's good then. When did you have it last? Okay. First time I went uh, running in a heat show. What? Dang. My brother made me run 1.7 at his pace, and he'd been training for two years. So I was <laughs> up all night long. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let's see. I was eight, and I had a virus that made me throw up anything I ate. Jeez. Gosh. What kind of virus, you know? I don't know. I remember I, I had the medication. I took medication. I threw that up, too. Was, oh. That's not right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> what you guys supposed to do? We get hospital and you were like six. Oh wow, okay. Alright, interesting. I couldn't sleep and threw up all night. Dang, girl, that was that I hate being up night and sick, you know what I mean? Let's see. Uh, the flu in eighth grade for a week. Boy was dying for real. Eighth grade, man, it sucks being sick when you're young. You're like, this this doesn't seem fun. The after a Georgia game, you had laryngitis? Double P guy? Who <laughs> might Double ear infection, <laughs> sinus infection, and strep. Jeez. Yeah, I, I can see that. <laughs> That's crazy. Having appendicitis in fifth grade, why did you have to get it removed? Yeah. Really? Dang, man. How was that whole process? Um, tough. It was tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you made it out the other side. Let's see. COVID and uh, pneumatic strep. Is that what that says? Oh, pneumonia, pneumonia and strep. Okay, nice. And then six weeks of COVID symptoms. Yeah, gosh. Yeah. Last year, the flu. What? Yeah, the flu sucks. The flu actually does suck. I don't care. 104? Oh, I'm Did you get another bond? 
That stings. That one hundred boy. Oh, that's tough, actually. That's real tough. What you have, Nicole? Oh yeah. But you were but you were sick then, and you're like, at least I'll at least I have an excuse. Wow. What? No. -uh. Wow. That's crazy, man. When you're a child. Wow. Okay. We're good. I'm glad you made it out. All right, guys. Well, um, I'm just congested today, but I feel fine. So let me ask you all this. Uh, the sub, how was the sub on um, Friday? The sub was okay, chill. Um, did anyone, was anyone not able to finish the practice? <laughs> no? Cass, I saw some blanks on here, but I'll just go ahead and call you out. So we'll make sure you, we'll make sure you finish it, okay? Because this will be for a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're fine. Um, so did anyone not finish this other than Cass? No? Yes? No? Oh, Ashley, girl. All right, I'll give it back to you girls. We can do it for homework, okay? All right. Um, but uh, other than, like, not finishing it, was it difficult? Was there a hard one? No, there was crazy ones. <laughs> there were some crazy ones? What you got, Chris? I had a couple of problems with the Okay. All right, well, let me hand these back anyway. You guys can just double check. Uh, we'll probably just check one or two harder ones that I think uh, I think most people struggle with. Um, I didn't really get the absolute chance to look over every single person's every question, but I know what the generally what the harder question was. Um, it's mostly when you went further down into the questions that got harder and harder. Um, so I'll hand these back. Um, I should say, while I'm handing these back, I want you guys to work on this warm up. It'll be a kinematics warm up. So let's see if you guys can solve this one. Yeah, now I'm going to hand these back while you guys are doing this. Try A, B, and C out for me.
any time I'm missing, it's a fun fact, any time you guys are missing acceleration to something else, you're almost always going to solve for acceleration first. Obviously, if you're missing acceleration and velocity, you can't do that. But if you have both velocities and times, if you're missing acceleration, then you can solve for acceleration, and then you'll solve for XL. Just a little fun fact. Excellent, good job. Excellent, good job, Tom. Yeah, what's up? Oh, 10 meters, I'm sorry. That's just, sorry. That's a sick brain right there. Yeah, yeah, and then take whatever you want so you can show me what how much it is that shows you. Put it right on there. You guys got the answer, you know, make sure you show them to me, okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll do this one. Uh, let me see again. Try C over again. And then can you, I see you have A. Do you have B on there? Oh, no. Can you try B for me?
you're still working on it and you don't want to hit, I wouldn't look at the board. Or you're still working on it and you don't want to hit, you do want to hit, I'd start looking at the board. Yeah. Yeah. So good your units. Um, so the answers you can see on the board uh, here as well. Um, I got 34.3 meters, whereas this says 35 meters. I would go with the 34.3. Um, that makes more sense to me. Um, then I got 165.7 and then 16.57 seconds. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions on this? No? We got 35. You got 35. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder what it would be about. All right, I'll go with that. What you got? Let's write out the calculations. Well, while he's doing that, guys, um, we are going to have our mousetrap car project uh, the, this Thursday. It's going to be right before our February break. So you guys know we only have four days this week. Oh, Pretty crazy. That's yeah. great. News. It's oh. great, yeah. Oh, so to help you guys out so you're not too stressed, um, what I'm going to do is, I, I believe on Wednesday, we'll have a half day of what we call free fall, where we calculate free fall. And then the other half of the day, or of the period, I should say, you guys can just work on your mousetrap cars, okay? That means then after that Wednesday, the following Thursday will be the mousetrap testing car day, okay? Um, and as a reminder, there needs to be a report done for that as well. So make sure you look through the rubric. In case you don't have the rubric, it's over here. Just to make sure you guys see that. Um, but on the bottom, it tells you about how to create that report, okay? Uh, I know it's a lot. I'll have heard. I'll you know on the second unit. The second unit is it's a hill to climb. Once you get over that hill, you'll be perfect. I promise. Okay. All right. Uh, so if there's no questions, guys, uh, let's jump into our brain break and we'll see what. Friday was just a kinematics work day. Um, I was over at Winder Elementary looking at these cute little kindergartners do these gifted certifications or these gifted tests. I should say, they were adorable. Do any of you guys have like a younger brother or sisters that are like in kindergarten age? Yeah, no, yes you do, Katie, no one else? I don't know, I don't maybe because I, I was the youngest, so I didn't have anyone younger than I am. But man, they're so cute. They're so small and very sweet. Um, but anyway, uh, so when I was doing that, you guys are doing this kinematics practice, okay? Um, let's try out the fir very first one, okay? And I'm sure you guys have the answer. Did any of you guys, were you guys able to check the answer key? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I didn't want you guys to just hover around the answer key and copy and paste, you know? But I do feel like it's nice to know if you're going the right direction, okay? Um, so number one, you may or may not already have the answer for it. Um, but let's just see if we can knock it out. We'll do number one and we'll do number nine and then we'll uh, call it a day on this. Um, once I'm done with this, guys, we'll move on to gravity, free fall, things like that. Let's make sure we cover our bases here before we go on to more complicated stuff. All right, so it says on number one, an airplane accelerates down a runway at 3.2 meters per second squared for 32.8 seconds until it finally lifts off the ground. And it says determine the distance traveled before takeoff. Determine the distance traveled. So we need to figure out the distance, xf, okay? Um, as always, guys, always do xf, xi, vf, vi, okay? Um, acceleration and time. Always, 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 every question, every single kinematics question, do this. I saw a lot of you guys did that, that's excellent. That's really, really good. Um, so now it says uh, a plane accelerates. So we have the acceleration, 3.2 uh, meters per second squared. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then it says uh, for 32.8 seconds, 32.8 seconds, I put that in time, until it finally lifts off the ground, determine the distance I traveled before taking off. 
All right, is there other things we know about this? What else can we say? Starts at zero, how do we know that? Accelerates down until it finally lifts off the ground. So it doesn't say it, but we can assume that an airplane accelerates. So if it accelerates, it has to start from some zero value. So we can say the initial velocity is zero meters per second. You guys agree with that? Yeah, all right, and then let's see. Uh, also, we could say there's zero meters. It has to start at zero, okay? The biggest thing we're trying to figure out is xf. So now let's look at everything we know and everything we don't know. So we don't know xf and we don't know vf. So we don't know this guy and we don't know this guy. Which one's the one we actually care about? Yeah, xf, right? Okay, so then knowing that, we can see our kinematic equation right here, okay? Um, which one has it where we have xf, but we don't care about vf? Which one is it? The last one. The last one. This is how you work these equations out. Find the two things you don't know, okay? Like, I don't know vf, and I don't know xf. Okay, well, I'm trying to find xf, so I need an equation that has xf in it. This one has xf, and this one has xf. The first one does not, so I don't care about the first one. Uh, the second one does, and the third one does. But the second one says no time. We have time. The third one says no VF. Guess what we don't have? A VF, right? So what equation are we going to use, guys? Yep, XF equals XI plus VIT plus one half AT squared. All right, let's just plug in everything we know and we don't know. We're trying to solve for XF. XI is zero. I'm just going to put a straight up zero. VI was zero, so I don't really care about VI times time because VI was zero, so I'll just put another fat zero. Plus one half, we have the acceleration at 3.2 meters per second squared, and then we do have the time at 32.8 seconds. Okay, it looks like 85 is what we think the time is. 32.8 seconds, and that's gonna be squared. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, let's just plug that into our calculator now. Let's see what we get. So if you've solved this, great. If you haven't solved it, I would suggest getting your calculator out um, and seeing what answer you get and comparing it to mine, okay? So plug it in, square it. Don't forget to square it. Squaring it can catch you a couple times, okay? How are you on that day? Is it all right? Was it too bad? Okay, good. All right, one, seven, two, one. That's what I got. One, seven, two, one. Anyone else? Does it make sense? Cool. All right, I know this is sometimes like watching paint dry, especially if you've already done it. Uh, so let's just do one more. I'm not dwelling too long. Did anyone get a different answer? Nope, okay, so that is the official answer key answer. So 1,721, this one says 1,720. Stuff like that doesn't bother me. Um, 1,721 meters for XF. All right, let's do one more, let's do number nine. So you guys flip on over to number nine. All right, this one, I'm not gonna say anything. I just want you to solve it, even if you've already solved it. Okay, so I want you guys to do it on your whiteboard. Solve for me one last time if you've already solved it. Um, I would suggest not looking at your answer, just reading it and seeing what happens. Okay, so y'all try out number nine. Erase this. Distance counts for XF and XI. XI just be zero. So the negative sign on the acceleration went up a lot. It went up a lot, is what you're saying? Yeah, so if the negative sign is on the second one, all the numbers are on the second one. 
Oh, oh, I see. Of negative space, and then yeah, yeah, yeah guys, that little negative's tricky there. Watch out. That may be why this one. <laughs> I see. That yeah. would be one. Yeah, don't forget that negative. Thanks for pointing that out, Jacob. So that negative's kind of like like sliced off there. So make sure you add it to your acceleration. Skid marks, 290 meters. That happened to me once. It's too early in the week for this. Peeps that may or may not be stuck. You guys can see how my determination of what is known is on the board, see if it matches up with yours. Once you've done that, what equation would you guys use? I see that I have BI. I want to solve for BI because the question asks determine the speed of the Jaguar before it began to spin. So that's before it initially begins to get to a stop. So I put zero for velocity final. Velocity initial we don't know, it's going pretty fast, so it has to slow down. Um, so the velocity initial we don't know, and then it doesn't say anything in there about time. Um, I don't see anything about time, so I don't care about time. So the equation we would use is what, my friends? Yeah, the second one, absolutely, yep. So we're trying to solve for I. You're very close. This is squared though, so how would you take that squared off? Close. If you have a square, you would find the square root to get the rid of that square. Excellent, great job. Yeah, so if I square root, yes, you're right. If I square root this side, which I mean, if you square root a negative, you technically get an imaginary number, but let's not get crazy. It's just going to be bi. So then you would find you would find the square root of that answer. Yep. <laughs> Excellent, Kyle. Good job. Did you got it, though? Yeah. <laughs> 
Excellent. Yeah, good job. Yes. How do we turn the in the back of the same circle like this? Um, yeah, because considering what? You probably put this at zero. So yes. Yeah. Excellent. Great job. Same thing, Luke? Perfect, excellent, good job. All right, guys, how we feeling? How we feel, how we feel? 25 sitting on 25 mil. Drake, anyone? Okay, cool. All right, I'll just be the lame one. All right, uh, well, anyway. So I got 47.56 meters per second for my velocity. Um, are there any questions about kind of everything we went over? No? Um, here's what I'm going to say. If you guys think you're finished with it, that's excellent. Um, you guys can turn it in. But before you do turn it in, I want to make sure you have all the units for all of your answers. Making sure, if it asks for velocity, make sure you show meters per second. If it's acceleration, then meters per second squared, distance, meters, all that stuff, okay? Make sure you have all your units. If you are not confused, you'll need to turn that in tomorrow. Because if I say Wednesday, you're going to forget Tuesday anyway and then you'll be rushed to do it Wednesday. So if you are not complete with it, you need to make sure you complete it tomorrow, okay? All right, cool. If there's no questions, if there's specific questions you guys can ask me, um, that's great. I'll set a, I'll go to four minute timer so you guys can wrap it all up. And once you are actually done with it, y'all can put it in that box. Let's right. jump okay. in to something and it's gonna build on what we've been talking about these past two days, Friday and on Thursday. So the first thing we're gonna look at, I'm gonna ask a bunch of questions. We're just gonna kind of play around with it, see what it looks like. All right, let's talk about this. I'm sure in your life, you have heard of gravity, okay? Gravity, now what does that mean? What does gravity mean? What is gravity? It's a weird word, isn't it? What is it? Anyone? Okay, if we don't know the definition of it, then what does it do? It falls around and attracts things to larger objects. Okay, and attracts things to larger objects, so smaller objects get attracted to larger objects. Here's my small object. How is it gonna get attracted to something? Is it attracted to me? Does it come towards me? Okay, technically, yes. Every single object has some gravitational attraction these two objects do but you can't feel it, you can't see it because there's a much stronger, greater gravitational field that everything is experiencing. Who is giving off this gravitational field, or what? Our planet, the Earth, and then more massively than you could say the sun, the sun's holding in our Earth, but the Earth holds in everything, right? Just like our sun holds in all the planets. Can you all even name all the planets? Go ahead, try it out. Mercury, who wants to help out next? Water. Venus. Mars? Pluto. Pluto is technically not a planet. Pluto is technically not a planet. Jupiter? Jupiter. What else is this? Saturn? Uranus? Uranus. 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 So every single one of these planets have a form of gravity. The sun has gravity, all that stuff. Okay, then the Earth's gravity. How can we tell the Earth has some gravitational field? What is our experiment we could run? If we jump, do we go back to the ground or do we just jump off? Yeah, if I jump up, I'm gonna fall back down. What if I drop this ball? What's gonna happen? It's gonna go down. I drop the ball, right? It goes down. Wouldn't it be weird if you drop something and it didn't go down? Yes, it would. So this is a form of gravity. Gravity, by definition, is any type of influence you have on an object, right? 
the Earth has a large influence on smaller objects. Is there anything on Earth that is close to the size of Earth? No? What's the biggest thing you can think of that's not Earth? <laughs> Other than, let me, let me rephrase. What's the biggest thing on Earth that is not actually Earth? <laughs> I, I was going to say Pangea. Pangea, yeah. What's a, what's a really large object that we can find on Earth? Buildings. Buildings, yeah. What's the biggest building? Do y'all even know? Oh, oh, the one in Dubai, right? The Burj Khalifa? Yes. I think that's what it's called. It's a really massive one. Yeah. I don't even know how many tons it is. Okay, you can say oceans. Yeah, I like that. All right. Well, everything has some type of gravitational influence. So if I drop something, okay, it's going to go down towards the center of Earth. It goes down. It doesn't go up. That'd be weird if it went up. Um, certain sports are all about defying gravity, like cheerleading specifically. How high can we fly someone, right? Not, that's not all cheer, I know. But, like... You know, are you able to manipulate your own body on physics, right? Can we um, flip as high as we can? How many turns can we do? How many rotations can we do? Um, every sport relies on gravity, right? Basketball wouldn't be fun if you just threw it and it dropped straight down, right? We need to make it fun to its own reference. Same with soccer, right? If I just kicked the ball and it kept going up, well, that wouldn't really be too that fun. Baseball wouldn't be fun if every ball you hit smacked up. What wouldn't be fun would be funny. Yeah, it would be funny, yeah. So, um, gravity, okay? Um, now let's talk about what is happening when we talk about gravity. When I first drop a ball, right? I'm gonna drop this ball. So, let me drop it from up here, actually. I'm gonna get up here, hold me in these, see if they can handle it. Okay, so I'm gonna drop a ball. Where is the ball going to be the fastest? At the very top, the middle, or the bottom? Bottom. bottom. Why the bottom? Acceleration. Acceleration, okay, so let's say, let's see, let's see. Okay, it drops, perfect, okay. So I'm gonna do it again. It starts slow and then it speeds up, but it happens very quickly, right? So you can tell me that the fastest velocity is really, really close to the ground. Very close to the ground, okay? Now why does the ball not all the way bounce back up to my hand? Why do I have to move my hand? Gravity. Gravity <laughs> having downward effect on it. You can say that. Now, sadly, that's not, an answer. that's not an answer. There's no answer you guys can give me or no answer I'm going to give you until next unit energy. So I'll just leave that as a mystery. But we can definitely say that the ball starts off slow when I drop it, right? It starts slow when I drop it. And then when it really starts to fall more and more and more, it gets faster and faster. Okay? So this faster and faster per second is what we call acceleration. Acceleration, by definition, is just like I said, if my velocity is getting faster and faster and faster every single second. That's why if you were to jump out of a plane, you are become very, 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 very fast. Oh, yeah. Very fast. The moment that you leave that plane, you get faster and faster and faster and faster. But did you know there's a moment where you actually stop speeding up? Do you know what that's called? Terminal velocity. Terminal velocity, final velocity, right? So when you jump out of a plane, you're going really, 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 really fast, meaning you're getting faster and faster and faster and faster and faster the closer you get to the Earth. And then you reach a point where you can't get faster anymore. Okay, you reach a terminal velocity, meaning air resistance has pretty much, in a sense, what some people say, has pretty much caught up with you. Okay? I mean, you can't accelerate anymore. So there's many, many instances of acceleration due to gravity, right? We can see them in waterfalls as well. Has anyone jumped off a waterfall before? Yeah? Nice. Where'd you jump off a waterfall? Uh, uh, it was when I was kayaking, uh, through, I can't remember which river it was. There was this huge waterfall I was jumped out. It was really fun. Nice. That's cool. And then what about this? Has anyone sky dove, sky dive? Well, Jesus, Aiden, what yeah. have you done? <laughs> yeah. um, not a lot, actually. That's cool, man. All right. So then what about this? Um, has anyone bungee jumped before? Don't raise your hand if you have. <laughs> no way, are you serious? Yeah. Wow, goodness, Hayden's done it all apparently. Yeah. All right, well when we drop off any item, any, any high uh, uh, location, we're going to accelerate. The faster and faster we get is the closer and closer we're gonna get to Earth. Of course, if you're super far away from the Earth, you're gonna reach a terminal velocity where you can't speed up anymore, okay? That is all our understanding of gravity. We call this gravitational acceleration. Because when you drop something, it accelerates. It gets faster and faster and faster. So if I were to draw like a dot diagram of me dropping something, all right, we can imagine here is first location, okay? It can start slow and then get faster and faster and faster and faster, okay? It starts off slow, so we can say this is like 
xi, we could say down here, you probably can't even see it, is xf, okay? We can see that as our position has changed, we get faster, meaning as our time has changed. If we go from time one to time two down there, we can see that we have accelerated. We have gotten faster and faster per every second or whatever time reference you wanna look at, okay? All right, any questions on that? No? Now we have to prove it, okay? That's all we have to do today is prove it. Um, so what I'm gonna do today is, uh, first off, do you know what the number is? Some people might, I'll be amazed if you do. There's a number you guys are gonna remember by the end of this semester, by the end of this unit. Um, that's gonna be the number that we utilize for gravitational acceleration, meaning how fast does something accelerate um, when it's under a gravitational influence, when it's dropped? Does anyone know that number? Yes, nice, 9.81 meters per second squared. So when we look at the acceleration due to gravity, so I say acceleration of gravity, lower, it's a subscript G, I say 9.81 meters per second squared. Meaning, for every one second, for every one second, something, whatever the object is, we can say a little cross ball, is increasing its speed 9.81 meters per second for every second it passes. So for every one second, it's going right around 10 meters per second faster. 10 meters per second is very, very fast. Let's look at that in miles per hour. All right, that's a good comparison. So I'm gonna call this about 10 meters per second. So for every one second, that's a crazy looking one. For every one second, we are increasing our speed at about 22 miles per hour. Okay, think about that. In two seconds, you're going 44 miles per hour. In three seconds, how fast would you go? 66. 66. In four seconds, how fast? 88. 88. All right, what about five seconds? Eighty-eight plus twenty-two. Uh, 104. <laughs> 104. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we need to use our calculators? Yes, we do. All right, let's see. 88 plus 22, 110. All right. Yeah. So. Four? Yeah. You're adding 22. In five seconds. What did you say? So it's five right seconds point? of something dropping, right? Let's say we drop the ball, okay? In five seconds of it dropping, it's 110 miles per hour. Where is something where you can drop it and it would drop for five seconds? Think about how long five seconds is. Where's something maybe in Georgia? Can we drop anything from Georgia and they'll drop for five seconds? Hi there, sorry to interrupt. Can we get Catlin Madalena, or excuse me, Caitlin Madalena for early dismissal, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Katie, you feel better. Top, top of Coca-Cola building. Say again? Top of Coca-Cola building. Okay, top, is there any building in Georgia you think that can have a ball drop for five seconds? Think about it. One, two, three, four, five. Instagram. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, it's Pink Atlanta, but yeah. Think somewhere in think some building in Atlanta? So? I think so. Yeah. I think like the, um, I don't know the buildings in Atlanta, yeah. but one of the taller buildings, yeah. right? Yeah. Definitely not like uh, Winder Barrow. Mm -hmm. How many seconds do you think it would take for a ball to drop from Winder Barrow High School? One. Two, two seconds. Probably one. I would say one second. Uh, so meaning, if we drop the ball from the top of Winder Barrow High School, the ball is going to hit the ground right around 22 miles per hour, or what we would say, 10 meters per second. Because think about it this way, it is accelerating every second. So it starts at zero, and then after one second, it's 10 meters per second. That's by definition what acceleration is. How many meters per second does it increase in one second? Meters per second squared. It really looks like this. Meters per second per second, okay? So we call that acceleration. So let's say, where could we drop something where a ball would go for about two seconds, do you think? Can we find somewhere in Winder? What about the water tower over there where the cookout is? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think the water tower could work. So if we drop the ball from the water tower, I would say it's somewhere between two and three seconds. One, two, three. Yeah, I would say. So then um, it would reach, what, 80, uh, 66? 66 miles an hour by the time you've dropped it from the water tower. Meaning, if you jumped off the water tower, what would happen? Yeah, you'd probably die. Okay. You guys ever watch that 70s show? Oh, when they fall off the water tower? I think yeah. They always talk about it. I think they would be dead if that happened in real life. Okay? Yeah. Because you're accelerating so fast, guys. You're accel like, like, so fast you're accelerating. Have you guys even jumped off of like a one-story tall structure? 
You guys ever jump off of a one story tall structure? Yeah. Dude, he gets fast quick. Mm -hmm. It's fast real quick. Or jump out of a tree, you start to realize, like, wow, this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta fall and roll. That's the idea. Bungee jumping. Yeah, bungee jumping. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. So um, that's our understanding of gravity. More specifically, uh, what we wanna say is gravitational acceleration. All right, now we'll memorize this number of 9.81 meters per second squared. Some people round it off to 10 meters per second um, squared, I should say. Apologies, 10 meters per second squared. Um, but that means every second an item is increasing its speed by 10 meters per second, or in American terms, in the right way, right? American, uh, or 22 <laughs> miles per hour, okay? 22 miles per hour is our understanding. It's pretty fast. Okay. All right. <coughs> There's no question on that. Let's move on. Um, so we talked about why does the ball uh, not come back to you? Acceleration due to gravity, the rate at which an uh, object speeds up towards Earth. You don't have to write down a definition. It's pretty straightforward, right? Acceleration means speeding up, and it's speeding up towards Earth. If we're talking about acceleration due to gravity, you can call it acceleration due to gravity. You could also call it gravitation. I said gravitation acceleration. The more proper term would be gravitational acceleration. All right, just keep adding more to it. All right, gravitational acceleration. All right, um, so we'll use this symbol, the acceleration due to gravity. Now, I have to make sure I put that little line over it. What does that mean? What does that line mean when I put that line above acceleration due to gravity? What does that mean? What about when we did it like this? What does that indicate? A direction. And it gives direction meaning what? Is it a vector or a scalar? Vector. It's a vector. So acceleration is what? A vector. Meaning if something's going down, what is the most proper way I could write this number? A negative. I really need to say negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay? Negative. They just said negative 9.8, but negative 9.81. Okay? Because it is going down, 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 down. Oh, my voice is scratchy. It's, I can't hit that note like I used to. All right. You know that song? Who sings that? Okay, cool. I'm getting old. Yeah, that's awesome. Song. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. I, I, I recognize yeah, the song. I'm trying to yeah. remember who. Baby, are you down? Uh, who sings that? I don't know. Whatever. It's not like a person that you know. Like, yeah. Every time what I hear wonder. this song, I'm like, oh, it's that guy. Like, I know this song. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so we talked about terminal velocity. Uh, you don't have to write this down. I think. Um, I, I think. Uh, I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't write it down like word by word. But understand that terminal velocity is when you can no longer accelerate. So we're talking about something that's like a really high structure. We're talking like jumping out of a plane. Okay, you really can't reach terminal velocity unless you get really, really high up in the air column. I don't know if it shows. I don't know if it shows the proper height that you need to be at, but it's okay. Um, I know at least 30,000 feet is enough. 30,000 feet is enough? Yeah, is that where you flew up to? Yeah, yep. yeah, I can see that. yeah, it's a really, really high structure, okay? All right, so let's move on to our lab for the day. Um, I'm gonna pass around this piece of paper. Um, what we're gonna do is we are gonna see if we can find the acceleration of the gravity. We're gonna see how close can we get to 9.81 meters per second squared. We are gonna use these things called ticker tapes, okay? Guess what kind of noise it makes? Like a tick, 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 but it's really fast, like fast. It's so fast that it does 60, 60, 60 ticks in one second. 60 ticks in one second. You can say it's ticked off. <laughs> okay, sorry, so sorry. I'm getting, uh, it's my, my sick brain is popping in, but it's sinus uh, uh, infection, so no one will get infected. All right, unless I just sneeze in your face or something, I don't know. All right, there we go. There we go. Probably. Let's see, there we go. All right, cool. Everyone's got one, it looks like. Grab a paper, grab a mask. All right. Now, let's show you how this lab works. You guys are going to find, you're going to try to calculate the number for acceleration due to gravity. Okay, you're going to see how close you can get to 9.81 meters per second squared. Meaning you need to use the percent error equation, which is in the black marker or X marker on the right. Your value minus the true value. What would our true value be? 
9.81. Yep, 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, all right, we understand that. Um, here is the ticker. Okay, here's the ticker. Here's what it looks like. Okay, you guys will unwind it. Um, and the ticking portion is, you see this little circle. Okay, this little circle is like a carbon paper. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to grab a little C clamp. You guys ever used these before? Okay, make sure we be safe, right? Of course, anytime you use these things, what would happen if you wound it up all the way and put your finger where you wound it up all the way? You would instantly crush it. It would hurt a lot. Okay, so let's not do, let's not hold it like this, because that's going to hurt yourself. You hold it by the handle like such, okay? Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to grab this ticker. There's a little plug-in you guys will have at every lab station. Um, you want to have it to where the ticker hangs off a little bit, okay? Um, uh, so let's actually let's have it like this, just for these purposes. So I'm, I'm actually going to have it like this. You don't need to have it hang off. So I'm going to have it like this. Um, in a moment, I'll thread a paper through there, and I'll show you exactly what you need to do, but... You'll unwind your seam clamp however you need to. Uh, I think I need to go a lot here. So I'm gonna unwind it a lot. All right, perfect. I put my seam clamp here, wind it back up. Of course, I'm close to this thing, so it's gonna take forever. All right, Now it's clamped on. All right, I'll grab this and I'll plug it in. Now my plug in's on the other side. So I'll put it over there. You guys will need tape for this lab. I'll put some tape out around the lab stations. So I'm gonna plug it in right here. Awesome. Now I'm gonna grab some tape. There's some tape right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a piece of paper. So you'll have this little piece of paper right here. You'll unwind it to where the paper can at least touch from your experiment to the ground, right? So my saying is always, usually you can go about arm length, okay? Maybe even less, it doesn't really matter. As long as you go a little bit like this. It's okay if you have extra, it's not a big deal. So I'm just gonna rip it off, okay? So here's my piece of paper. Okay, it's gonna be what I where I record information at. Um, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna loop it. There's two little bars, okay? I'm gonna loop it under the bars and I'm gonna loop it under the piece of paper. Okay, so there's that purple piece of paper, so I'm gonna loop it under. Okay, like such. So now you all see how that's structured, right? All right, and then I'm just gonna pull it all the way through. All right, and I'm gonna get a mass. Now, here's a question I wanna ask you. Would it matter if I tied, this is a 50 gram mass, or would it matter if I tied, let's say, a 500 gram mass? Yes. Would they fall differently? guys are absolutely incorrect. Now think about it this way. If they fell at different rates, wouldn't we need different numbers for everything? We would. But that's not the case. Everything, everything, everything falls down to the center of the earth or falls down due to gravity at the same exact rate. But let's think about it this way. What if you dropped a bowling ball and a feather? Which one would it be found first? Oh, the bowling Bowling ball. So what's the difference then? Yeah, how much, how resistant are you to air? Now, so then if I had maybe something like this, I'm not gonna drop your experiment. If I had something like this and I dropped it like such, do you think that would be different as if I just dropped this? Absolutely, look how much more surface area this has, okay? It's a lot wider, right? It's the same thing for this, like even this, right? If I fan it out, if I dropped it like this, it's gonna drop slower, it's gonna fall down slower. Whereas if I just had a nice, narrow, uh, pretty dense eye object item, okay? Any sense? All right, so um, with these masses, you can use any mass. Don't use a piece of paper, okay? Because that will obviously affect how it drops. But um, there'll be some mass hangers in these little cardboard boxes. You can use any mass you want, okay? Um, I'm just gonna use this mass. And I'm gonna get some tape. So I'll get some tape. And then I'm just gonna tape it to one end. You don't have to be an engineer about it, okay? You can literally just tape it on. So here's me taping it on. Look, it looks like crap. Okay, does it hold? Absolutely. All right, so I'm gonna turn it on. You'll hear it making these little marks. All right, it's going 60 times in one second. Very, very fast. All you're gonna do is drop it. 
Okay? Once you've dropped it, you'll look at your, your ticker tape. On your ticker tape, because you put it under that carbon paper, you guys probably only in front can see it, but you can see really, really small blue marks, okay? Now, let's think about it this way. If I've dropped this item and it, it's made ticks, it made one tick, uh, it made 60 ticks in one second. So, All right, go ahead. There we go. All right, guys, explain to me. Um, could you tell me what you first did? How did you get this piece of paper with all those marks on it? First, we added a weight and we put it through this machine that like makes little dots on it. Mm -hmm. And from there, we measure the distance between each dots so we can calculate, you know, the distance and then from there make a graph out of it. Excellent. I love it. I love it. You guys have any questions? Looks like you're finding the distances now, mm -hmm. right? And then yes, exactly. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things. Making sure we look at the units, we'll find mm -hmm. velocity meters over seconds. And you go from there. Sweet guys. <laughs> no, keep going, please. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's because of recording. I think eight. I like eight. Yeah. What would that mean? So, if you got eight like centimeters, system. what would you have to do then instead? Well, you said eight centimeters or point eight centimeters. It was eight. It was point eight. Okay, so then okay, you've already started you're converting. Yeah. So then, yeah, exactly. You're doing your converting, right? Because I don't want to screw you guys over whenever you get to velocity and you're doing centimeters over seconds instead of meters over seconds. Okay, cool. 